solving the Wheatstone bridge with a delta to y equivalent circuit. Here's a circuit with numerical values, and we'll indicate the junctions and show a node table, 0 volts at D, and that makes node A 54 volts. And for our delta to y equivalent circuit, we'll transform the 18, 20, and 60 that make up that triangle into this x, y, z that introduces another node, which I'm calling E. Now, the way this equivalent circuit works is to find the sum of the three resistors, and that's 98, and that's the denominator of three calculations for resistors X, Y, and Z. For each one, for example, X, it's the product of adjacent values, 18, 20, so 18 times 20, over that sum 98. So we have these values. At this point, we can use series and parallel combinations. We have a series part here and here. Now those two results are in parallel, and that result then in series with the 11.02. So we get an equivalent resistance of 28.8 ohms, and we can take the 54 volts divided by that equivalent ohms to get the total current 1.875 amps. With the total current, we can get the voltage drop across 11.02 ohms and then the node voltage at E. And we'll put that in our table. From E to D, going through B or through C, we have two series circuits, and a series circuit is a voltage divider. So the way that works is the voltage from D to B, it's, again, since D is zero volts, that means the voltage at B as a node voltage uh, the voltage divider has it that it's the resistance 63 divided by the sum of the resistors 63 plus 3.67 and that's the fraction of the 33.37 volts that is associated with the 63 ohm resistor or node B. And we have a similar voltage divider that includes point C. Let's put those values in our node table. And for each of the resistors, we just find the volts associated with each resistor as the difference in appropriate node voltages. And that's the Wheatstone bridge solved with equivalent circuits, starting off with that delta to Y transformation.